Hello, good morning. I feel like a combination of the CEO at a AGM meeting and that of last night, feeling rather biblical in the sense that looking down the new table we bought for the dining room, I felt like the Last Supper. Not to suggest that I was one of those present at that moment. But here is a good example of what you can buy here in the Philippines. It's a solid wood, very well built dining room table. I would say that in length it must be 2.2 meters long maybe. I don't think it's 2.4 but it's certainly quite long. And it comes with eight chairs. So we've got room for visitors, so you have to make your booking. All English breakfast, of course. And that costs 36,000 pesos. Now, I have heard many of you talk about finance being extremely high here, and that's true. You know, you try and buy a car on time payment here, and you'll pay nearly double what the original cost was if you pay cash. Credit is not something that is uh, offered in a cheap, encouraging way to buy a new vehicle here. So those that drive around in them often are paying double. That's why when they hand them back up they can't afford to buy them. They owe still more in interest than they actually own the car. So the car goes back on the market for virtually what they paid for it. Now, this table, I had two options. One was to buy it at 36,000. This table cost 36,000 pesos delivered. And initially we asked, how much would it cost if we paid it off over, say, three months? And they said, oh, we don't do that. So of course we opted to walk away. Of course, in the Philippines, they like to haggle. They'd already talked about reducing the price. And I thought, whoa, reduce the price when it's cheap anyway? To buy this table through a furniture shop would have probably cost me double. And yes, they probably would have done it over 12 months. Had no interest, too. A lot of them in furniture shops are just happy to double the price from wholesale to retail and wear the cost of the interest themselves. In this particular case, they agreed to put one third down and the two payments following each month. So we opted for that and that meant that we put 12,000 down and we pay another 12 in three weeks time and in another four weeks after that, it's all paid for. So it sort of takes the sting out of having to take the whole lot out of your bank accounts in one lump. And it's a way of encouraging a little bit more careful spending when one is budgeting on a weekly basis. So. That was the start of my thought for the day and uh, as you might have seen at the beginning of this video there's my image of me sitting at the end of the table but again we've spoken so much about relationships here in the Philippines it's probably boring you lot stupid but it is so important that anyone coming to the Philippines is fully aware of all the, the pros and cons of hitching up with a Filipino. There is no one fits, you know, one size fits all because quite clearly they're too varied in their randomness I might say. Sometimes you find what you think is a perfect person and sometimes a little bit raggedy on the edges and sometimes not a good choice 
And that's the point that I'm trying to get across. You know, coming over after meeting your meeting, after making an acquaintance online, expecting the ultimate situation when they arrive here for the first time to greet and meet the woman you've been speaking to for maybe a year or even two. Maybe even sending money to them as well. It's a big jump and it's a big question mark because what appears to be a perfect person online may well be not the kind of person you're actually looking at in reality. I mean, with the introdu introduction of uh, artificial intelligence, it's quite amazing how you can actually sit here like me. I could make myself look so handsome. My voice would be the same, but my visual effects would be different. Now, of course, if you got off the plane to meet this rather handsome young man and discovered you got this decrepit old man, um, you might have wondered, did he send his father? And that's the point. It's becoming harder and harder to really get the right impression. You go on Facebook as a good example. You get hounded by, if you, especially if you go public. If your Facebook is set to public, you'll get invited or invitations to or requests to become your friend. And they are literally every day, we're talking at least a hundred per day. They're beautiful photographs, they're luscious, beautiful young ladies seeking to be your friend. And the first thing that they say is, hi. And then they want to talk to you. And they suggest to you that they don't have any load so if you'd like to send them some load, they can chat to you. Hmm. Well, that alleviates the majority of those that want to join for that reason. It's a scam. And the local women here in the Philippines, the young ones, who haven't got the opportunity necessarily to um, get a job that's going to pay them regular money, opt to make money on Facebook out of you. And of course it's your heartstrings that they're aiming at. They're making promises of sending you a video of them. I'm not quite sure what they want to send you, but it's no doubt something to entice more money out of your pocket. And the other thing to remember is that quite often the photos are photoshopped and they don't bear the same resemblance to the person you eventually, if you are lucky enough to, meet. In other words, they've been artificially created with some kind of an app. And the only thing that possibly is there is maybe a birthmark to identify that that is the same person. But they're usually very busty or very lusty or very bottomly, if you get my meaning, in their photos. So they're there to entice the viewer to the opportunity of getting to know them better at a cost. And that's the first thing that I'm aware of, that it's not the most flavoursome aspect of Philippines and Filipino ladies. And I believe that if you go on the dating sites these days, you'll find 90% of them are like that too. They're just trying to get money from you, using it as a way to extract some money. And of course, as we get older, we get suckered into these things. And even if you have one that you're talking to and you're just casually thinking, oh well, let's see if there's anybody else out there that takes my fancy, but you're not quite sure about this particular one. Well, if there's doubt, don't, don't hesitate to end it. There's no point in having a friendship online. That's all they are. You're a pen pal, a modern day pen pal. 
and you hear people say, oh, she's my fiance, she's my girlfriend, how can she be? You have never touched her, you've never met her, except online. You might have shared phone sex even with her, but that doesn't mean that you know her. It just shows you what kind of a lady maybe she is. And that is that she's so eager to entice you into her net that she's prepared to do anything. Hmm, is that really the one that you want? So be very careful who you make your friends on Facebook because it also can have a sting in its tail. And that is that they're not scared to threaten you, to expose you in some way online. And it happens every day, trying to make you the victim of their anger and frustration that they didn't win, a, win you over. So, as much as there are some beautiful ladies out there, wait till you come here. Come for a holiday, maybe a month, two maybe three months. That way you have a chance to naturally get to know the people around you, get to know who is single and who is interested in you. Because they are going to be more value than somebody who you've just met online, who is promising you the world, really often just for a green card or citizenship in your country. So. That's probably all I can say this morning because I'm thinking again for the one later on in the day. So if you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And yes, the dog has already tried to chew one of the legs, so we now have a smell of vinegar in the house because we have to spray the bottom of the legs so that to discourage them from wanting to have a nibble. But it's also a case of creating a barrier at night so they don't wake up in the morning like a little uh, woodpecker on the furniture. Have a lovely day. Bye now.